What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out the Undertaker slaps fan WTF WWE CGI AEW accident unmasking in wrestling news. Uh, I'm interested to see why the Undertaker is slapping fans, man. What, what's going on? Why y'all pissing off the Undertaker? We gotta figure that out. We're gonna check out another WrestleMania video, man. Shout out to WrestleMania. He's always dropping the great content vid when it comes to wrestling news. So, appreciate all the love and support, man. Roll to 60K and let's get right into this video. It is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Now, as Crown Jewel draws near, what will the WWE do to hype its Saudi Arabia show? And join us now as we look at the 8th October edition of the Blue Brand, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including Tony Khan makes Mr. McMahon famous, mm. The Undertaker takes out a fan with a slap, an AEW star accidentally unmasked, and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for yeah, daily wrestling videos, channel. and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Now, as always, we won't recap the show, but just provide you with the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as number one, Roman Rests. Now, the WWE did well last night by having Universal Champion Roman Reigns take a break from beating up wrestlers, instead okay. of giving him a public audience with Tribal Council Paul Heyman. Reigns thanked Heyman for ensuring the Usos remained on SmackDown, and Heyman put on an Academy Award-winning performance nah, as Reigns' is Cody repeatedly stating that his allegiance to Reigns and promising defeat for Brock Lesnar. Now, incredibly, the blue brand has gone so good with its storylines that there's no way of knowing just where Heyman's loyalties lie. And this is what I like. You don't really know. I said this in my video. I'm not sure where his alliances line up with. Is he really with Roman or is he secretly working with Brock? I like this storyline. And Heyman was likely involved in the storyline. The Tribal Chief is the cornerstone of SmackDown. I didn't even realize he has the sixes I have back there. The uh, the Electric Green sixes. Didn't even know he had them on, man. Roman with the kicks. Let's go. But that doesn't mean that he has to wrestle every night or even confront a potential opponent. Nope. Last night's segment was well worked, continuing to tease fans as to where Paul Heyman's loyalties lie and hyping the big bout between Brock and Roman at Crown Jewel. Can't Number wait. two, big build for Becky, Bianca, and Banks. Now the WWE continues to build things up for the upcoming triple threat match between Sasha Banks Looking forward Bianca to this Bella match as well. SmackDown Women's Champion Becky Lynch at Crown Jewel. The match should be fantastic considering the talent involved, but the WWE hasn't slacked off, instead using SmackDown to up the hype, creating a narrative of Banks and Becky focusing on each other whilst underestimating the EST. In a perfect world, this would lead to Belair proving them wrong and capturing the women's title. Yes, which would be great if they really put over Bianca Belair to regain her title, you know, that she lost in like a couple of seconds, a few seconds. It would be nice because Bianca, I mean, uh, Sasha and um, Becky, they're already established. People know who they are. They're at the top at the wrestling division on the women's side of things. Bianca needs that. So I would be happy if they gave Bianca the rub here. Just so they can build her up. She's like, yo, she defeated both of them in the same match. Give her some little momentum and credibility back. But I don't think she's going to win. I think they're going to probably put the belt on um, Sasha Banks since uh, Becky is going to Monday Night Raw. But the WWE seeming obsession with pushing Becky Lynch at the expense of everyone else on the women's roster suggests a different outcome. Number three, Vega Victorious. As Alita Vega scored a surprise win in round one in the Queen's Crown Tournament, defeating newcomer Tony Storm. While fans can question the decision to job Storm out, one thing is clear, they're giving Vega a push and setting up an interesting scenario as she faces Carmella next week in the second round. Could this mean a baby... Definitely would have preferred Tony Storm to win, but that's just my personal opinion. ...face turn for Vega or something else? Whatever the case, a fan should see Vega end up wearing the crown. Number four, the rated R superstar strikes. This was last a good night's segment. confrontation between Edge and Seth this Rollins was, was a, a perfect segment. payoff for their white hot feud as Edge attacked Rollins, seeking revenge on Seth for him. This was a really great feud. I enjoyed that. Well, I enjoyed that segment. In my mind, I'm enjoying the feud, so. Edge's home last week and challenging him to a Hell in a Cell match. Wow, we're actually getting a gimmick match outside of a gimmick pay-per-view while Edge is attacked. Which is great. This is how Hell in a Cell should be booked. It shouldn't be booked 
on the pay-per-view. There shouldn't be a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. It should just be Hell in a Cell is a match that you only bring out when you want to end the feud. You want to you want to take it to that level because it's gotten that personal. That's the only time you bring out Hell in a Cell. I think you should only bring out when the feud demands it. But hey, what do I know? was predictable as edge was trying to use a piece of the chair for the crossface it was extremely entertaining and the idea of both superstars throwing down in a hell in a cell match to settle this feud is thinking that it's going to be match of the year number five wait. the mysterio saga continues the slow build up to the inevitable feud between dominic and rey mysterio continued last night with the wwe using it to help Sami Zayn advance in the king's crown tournament as dominic's attempt to help his dad stymie Zayn's heel tactics backfired now at this point, fans have to be wondering if Dominic is that incompetent or subtly <laughs> sabotaging his papa's matches. Now either way, you can be certain the fans will be in for a father and son scrap, the likes of which we haven't seen since Vince McMahon battled Shane McMahon. Mm -hmm. Number 6, Shinsuke gives up the crown. Now it's time to congratulate SmackDown's writers for maintaining continuity by having Shinsuke Nakamura give up his King of the Ring crown in light of the new tournament beginning. While it might have made more sense for Nakamura to compete in this year's tournament, it was good to see the WWE acknowledge the temporary status of the crown and to further Shinsuke's face status by him honorably giving it up. Number 7. Happy Days Are Here Again a Baron Corbin's Happy Corbin gimmick is off to a great start. Another reminder that Corbin can be- I didn't even know this was a thing. So he's happy now? He's not a, a, a miserable bum? Oh, uh, okay. Any gimmick work. Despite his lack of world championships, Corbin's <clears throat> career is anything but a failure as he's the type of wrestler who can make any feud work, he can have good matches with anyone and he's great at angering the fans. Corbin's latest henchman, Madcap Moss aka Riddick Moss may or may not be benefiting from being at Corbin's side as his past henchmen never seem to have fared well in the booking, but Moss is at a point in his career where he has to take whatever he can get. And number 8, two tantalizing tournaments. Now this year's twin tournaments to bestow crowns on the WWE's male and female stars is off to a great start, with some interesting names entered in the tournament and the potential for the WWE to help out the winner. History has shown that the tournament winner doesn't always benefit, but King Corbin's recent reign helped him and hopefully this year's tournament will benefit whoever wins. To be honest, the King Corbin stuff could have worked, but it didn't really go nowhere and it kind of got stale pretty quickly, in my personal opinion. I feel like the tournament hasn't really been beneficial in a long, long time. Um, I feel like if you're going to win that tournament, you should be the next guy up for a real main event feud, main event title shot. But I don't, I don't feel like it's been beneficial as much as it should have. Let me know down below if you guys feel like the past King of the Ring tournaments of late have been actually beneficial and why. The men's tournament is interesting because it features a number of veterans as opposed to the women's tournament which features some newer names like Dewdrop. It also presents an opportunity to help someone who's been sitting on the sidelines such as Dana Brooke, although her chances of winning seem unlikely, or someone like Shayna Baszler whose recent push could be cemented with a win. Please have Shayna Baszler win this goddamn thing. For the love of everything that is great, have her win the goddamn tournament. Please. Do Shayna Baszler right. Win in the tournament. Please. Like most King of the Ring tournaments, this year's men's and women's tourneys aren't perfect, but they have the potential to shape. I heard about this match. It was like only two minutes. And uh, Liv Morgan lost. I heard about this. How is that except? Who wants to watch? Who wants to watch a two-minute match, bro? You're not even giving these women a chance to really work. I guess. Things up. At this point in time, I only want Xavier Woods to win. But that was the good. Oh. What about the bad? Is no oh, yeah. Xavier Woods winning it. That would be nice. That would be interesting. I would like to see it. Number one, Liv loses. And Liv Morgan's Queen's crown loss in the opening round sent a clear message to fans. Morgan is a mid-card act at best, and yep. the WWE sees little in her future. Yep. How else to interpret Morgan's loss to Carmella as Morgan seems to be over with fans and who recently defeated Carmella on pay-per-view? The lack of follow-up shows the WWE's women's division is still focusing on pushing the wrong people yep. as Mella is anything but money right now. No. And there was nothing downright ugly, but last night SmackDown saw the blue brand back doing things right, whether it's entertaining matches, in intriguing storylines or interesting segments. The King of the Ring and Queen's Crown tournaments got off to a great start last night and the WWE did a fantastic job building up Crown Jewel, something they really haven't done in the past. 
and the blue brand continues to be the WWE's crown jewel as seen by last night's show. What did you guys think of it? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Yeah, SmackDown still, in my opinion, is the A show. Uh, they're still holding it down. They have been holding it down, in my personal opinion. I usually only check out mostly SmackDown related stuff. I may check out some Raw stuff. If you guys let me know on Instagram, hey, you need to check this out from Raw, I'll probably check it out. But outside of that, SmackDown, man. Now, our first story looks at Tony Khan making Mr. McMahon famous. Topping the news today is a story that could only happen in professional wrestling. A recent story in the entertainment trade journal Variety spotlighted AEW's growing role in pro wrestling. AEW's Twitter account posted a link to the article, Vince McMahon is finally getting what he hasn't seen in 20 years, competition, which led to Mr. McMahon trending on social media. That's likely not the only reason Tony Khan made Mr. McMahon famous, which of course is us being facetious. Mm -hmm. Khan also tweeted about SmackDown running a supersized show on 15th October that will run a half hour over into Rampage. The blue brand is airing on FS. Oh, wow. Damn. Damn, so they're going to be taking up Rampage, like, slot time? Well, I, like, what, what's happening here? Like, I, I did, someone did uh, message me saying since uh, the playoffs for MLB is going on, they're switching into FS1 Sports. So, uh, yeah, man, uh, they this is interesting. They, they did, I guess they're going to do like a two-hour and 30-minute show. I'm not sure. It's not going to be a full three-hour show, but a two-hour, 30-minute show. I don't know. That's crazy, yo. They're really cutting into AEW's Rampage time. That's wild. Also tweeted about SmackDown running a supersized show on 15th October that will run a half hour over into Rampage. The blue brand is airing on FS1 due to baseball playoffs, and the WWE appears to be stacking the show in order to maximize the ratings from the cable network, which has a smaller audience than the blue brand's normal home on Fox. Mm -hmm. Khan wasn't concerned, tweeting, I saw you're doing a half hour head-to-head -head with us. I can't wait to finally beat your main show head-to-head. -head. It's been a long time coming. See you next Friday for AEW Rampage on oh. AEW. Kind of calling Vince McMahon out. Now, of course. Wow. Even I, I like the fact that Tony Khan even ad admitted that SmackDown is the A show. It's the headline show. Raw is nowhere near the headline show as it used to be. I like that he even knows which is the A show. You're doing a half hour head to head with us. I can't wait to finally beat your main show head to head. It's been a long time coming. See you next Friday for AEW Rampage on AEW. Kind of calling Vince McMahon out. Now, of course, boasting like that can backfire, so mm -hmm. AEW's president had better hope Rampage delivers. Ringside News also commented on the Variety piece and authors alleged ties to AEW, pointing to a tweet from Twitter user WWE Gareth. Since people keep tagging me in some article that AEW posted about Vince McMahon, do some research on Gavin Bridge, the person who wrote the article, and his connections to Tony Khan and AEW. It'll make more sense when you understand the person behind the article. Mm. As anyone familiar with media knows, that there's often a cushy relationship between entertainment companies and yep. the media, which True. has us asking, so what? It's not as if Variety reporters wrote an article lambasting the WWE, so is this all just a non-issue? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Becky Lynch's cringy CGI. Oh boy. The WWE has really upped its already world-class production values by adding CGI to its mm -hmm. wrestlers' entrances on TV and pay-per-view. Unfortunately, Becky Lynch's new CGI oh, has fans no. laughing as it looks like a mixed mashup of a Disney princess and a... What in the hell is that? What? What in the hell? What are we looking at? Y'all see this? What is that, bro? No. Mm -mm. That looks awful. That look that looks quite terrifying. No. Seen from a Saw movie, Becky's new heel persona is already getting mixed results from fans, and this CGI persona isn't helping. Next awful. up, the Undertaker knocks out a fan on his ass. Now, did the Undertaker lay out a fan with a devastating chop? Well, a recent TikTok video posted by the Phenom, yes, the Undertaker is on TikTok, shows a fan asking the dead man to lay into him with a chop, utilizing all his force. Well, 
he got what he wanted, and he knocked the fan right to the ground. <laughs> a close look at the video shows a little bit of overselling from the fan. I'm pretty sure you didn't hit him that hard. Yeah. Nevertheless, it's a fun video and a reminder of how wrestlers are using social media to entertain their fans. Okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> finally, the TNT... Would you guys take a, a wrestling chop from The Undertaker? Let me know down below in the comment section. Accidentally reveal Evil Uno's identity. And last but not least, it looks like TNT may have accidentally exposed Dark Order member Evil Uno's identity, despite his history of trying to keep it as a secret. As reported by Ringside News' Paul Davis, a recent episode of Cody and Brandy Rhodes' reality show Roads to the Top showed backstage footage from Double or Nothing. Evil Uno, or someone in his gear, could be seen in the background. The show is careful to blur out the faces of certain people, but this time it looks like they missed Uno's face. It's incredible that something like this could happen, oh, but shit. perhaps it's a reminder that AEW needs to focus on wrestling rather than reality shows. Mm -hmm. But there you have it, guys. The good, the bad, and the downright ugly from SmackDown is... That's crazy, man. Hey, I don't know what the hell that Becky Lynch 3D... Creep fest that was. I mean, Halloween is right around the corner, so that that shit was creepy, man. So uh, yeah, man, uh, they definitely need to work on that. But hey, look, at the end of the day, I am enjoying what SmackDown is trying to do. They're still the A show. They're still putting on the best stories, and hopefully, the people that are moving to Raw, like Edge and Seth Rollins, they can create some more compelling stories on that brand because that brand needs it. So comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys looking forward to the special edition of SmackDown? That's going to be two hours and 30 minutes longer. Are you guys going to watch that? Are you guys going to uh, only watch uh, AEW Rampage? Are you guys going to watch both of them? Comment down below. Let me know. Appreciate all love and support. Roll 260K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me.